I think it's really startling to to go there and see so many people and even again because ALL acute lymphoblastic leukemia is um, is you know so prevalent among children. Seeing the number of children mm-hmm. with white lanterns, it's just really I mean it's it's jaw dropping. My my father is a two time survivor of blood cancer of a leukemia, and um, I mean if you talk to him today, he will tell you that he's alive because of the research that LS has funded, advancements in treatments and therapies. We need help leading up to the walk, um, the night of, um, and we also would just love to see more people who are passionate about um, finding cures um, and passionate about making a difference for people like Hannah. Welcome to another episode of the Wichita Life Podcast. This is Landon. Today's podcast is brought to you by Il Primo. Il Primo is the oldest coffee shop in Wichita and is located at Central and Woodlawn. School is back in session and Il Primo offers a great place to do your homework and study. So stop by, crack open your books, and try one of their delicious smoothies like their strawberry banana smoothie. This is the second half of an interview I had with members of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. I spoke with Chris and Shelly, who run campaigns for LLS. A lot of people have friends or family who have been affected by blood cancer or cancer of all types. Chris and Shelly are no different. Every three minutes, one person in the U.S. is diagnosed with blood cancer. An estimated 176,200 people in the U.S. are expected to be diagnosed in 2019. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society helps lead research to help cure cancer. We talk about all this as well as a big campaign that's coming up that they host every year called Light the Night, which is on October 12th, 2019. Enjoy my conversation with Chris and Shelley from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. All right, this is Landon, and I'm here with Chris and Shelley from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Pretty good. good. Um, So we'll just start off. Can you guys just tell me a little bit about society? So the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society is, we are the world's largest nonprofit dedicated to blood cancers. Okay. So our mission is to cure leukemia, lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, and myeloma, and improve the quality of life of patients and their families. So we fundraise money through multiple different campaigns, like Light the Night, which we'll talk about. Um, And the money goes to patient financial assistance, uh, cancer research. We do a lot of advocacy work at the state and federal level. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, that's really where where Mm -hmm. our work is. Cool. And is that, so is that worldwide, U.S. wide? What does that look like? Yeah. So right now we're, yeah, we are, we're in the United States and in Canada actually yeah, too. Cool. We are. Awesome. One thing I think that's pre- interesting about our research is that we really will fund the research that's most promising all over the world. Mm-hmm. And we, again, and we believe that because we're following the best research and, and wanting to find better cures and treatments for mm-hmm. Um, cancer. So if that happens to be in Wichita, Kansas, that's, sure. we fund that. If it happens to be in Berlin, then, then we fund yeah. that. So yeah. Very cool. Do most major cities in the U.S. and Canada have an office like Wichita does, or is that sparingly? We have 42 chapters. Okay. Yeah. So there's, yeah, there's chapters all over the nation. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah, most of the major cities we have mm-hmm. have a chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, and LLS is actually in its 70th year this year. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. And touching awesome. on what Shelley said about research. Um, since our inception, we've funded over one point three billion dollars wow. in cancer mm-hmm. research. So that's incredible. Um, just really, really awesome work. Yeah. yeah. Is there any specific place that a lot of the research happens? It's like I don't know, like you said, Berlin or wherever. Is there like one place in the world or in the U.S. that a lot of the progress is made or anything like that? No, I mean it's spread out all over. Yeah. Everywhere. Um, yeah. But we actually have some research grants that. LLS is funding at KU Med Center. Nice. Yeah. So um, some City. pretty local yeah, um, pretty initiatives close. right now, too. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Um, so how do people get involved with LLS, or how do you guys get involved with LLS? Um, so we work, you know, we get connected to patients in multiple different ways, mm-hmm. um, mainly through nurses and nurse navigators. Mm-hmm. Um, if they get a new blood cancer diagnosis, 
they refer patients to our information resource center, hmm? which is basically a one-stop shop for blood cancer patients. They um, call our information resource center and we can give them information on their diagnosis. We can give them, um, if, if they're in that situation, they can give them clinical trial information. Mm -hmm. um, they connect them to us, the local chapters, and mm -hmm. they give them all the information that they would need if they need to apply for our financial assistance programs, whether that be a travel assistance program mm -hmm. where we help patients get to and from their treatment or pay for lodging or pay for food. Um, or um, we also have a copay assistance program sure. where depending on the diagnosis, we can pay the patient's insurance copays. Nice. Very cool. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. What does, I guess, what does the research look like? Is it, um, like, is it at universities? You said KU Med Center. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other details on the research and like what that aspect of it looks like? Um, yeah, so it'll take place either in a clinical setting or mm -hmm. in a lab, um, and there are different stages, and hopefully our um, chief medical officer won't, um, you know, be mad at me for misrepresenting any of it, but um, but yeah, it can take place in different stages, and mm -hmm. so, um, you know, we have research that is looking at um, how cancer, the you know, the genesis of cancer and how it starts in a, in a body, in, sure. or in a human body. Um, there's really no way to effectively prevent or screen for most blood cancers. Yeah. Um, and so we really don't, as Hannah had said, we really don't know what causes it oftentimes. Um, we do know that acute lymphoblastic leukemia, what Hannah um, was diagnosed with, is the most common pediatric cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, you know, some of it will be focused to that. And then otherwise, a lot of um, research will be focused on how do we have better and more effective cancer treatments that's less cytotoxic. Toxic. So as Hannah was saying, it is, I mean, it's basically poison that is designed in, in the hopes to ki kill your cancer, but right. it will kill whatever is in its path. Right. So how do we have precision? You know, we're, we've invested and we're one of the first organizations to invest early in precision medicine to mm -hmm. try and specifically target cancer cells so that we can save healthy cells and help people have a better quality of life after treatment. Right. Um, not only survive treatment, but not have to deal with the lingering effects of, um, you know, liver problems, kidney issues. Um, we want to see people thrive in, right. in survivorship and not have to be, you know, crippled by that. So um, that's a big aspect of it as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have two big focuses the past several years. One just announced recently. Um, one is for acute myeloid leukemia, okay. which had not seen um, really any advances for 40 years. We were using the wow. same treatments for 40 years and really having poor, poor results on um, in terms of sur survival rates um, versus acute lymphoblastic leukemia in the you know 1960s, it was a 4% survival rate, and now it's in the high 90%, really? so 90% wow. survival yeah. rate. Um, it's incredible. So yeah, so we're wanting to see how can we um, how can we have advancement in this specific type of leukemia that hasn't seen advancement, and so we have a AML beat AML trial. Um, KU is one of those sites, mm -hmm. and I believe there are 11 sites now. Um, mm -hmm. And we've seen a lot of great results already with people. That's um, awesome. And they're, I think, putting one drug to market now that came mm -hmm. out of that trial. Um, and our next initiative is the is a children's initiative, and okay. so um, it is way too difficult to get new treatments passed for children and, and any for any type of pediatric um, cancers or diseases. And we're trying that, so it's really stalling progress. Um, and cancer is so different in a ch in a child than it is in an adult. Yeah. Um, and we're oftentimes, I mean, so we we need a lot a, a bigger focus on um, on how to help pediatric you know patients. Mm -hmm. And so we're, I mean, really leading the world in um, in clinical trials and what that looks like, and coordinating with. A number of different organizations, the you know, um, the government, FDA, um, and hospitals all over the country to figure out how can we all come together and share information, share resources, because yeah. that's at the end of the day what we want is to see cancer cures. Hundred percent, that's really cool. Um, so then let's lead in a little bit to light the night. Can you talk a little bit about what that is, when it is, what that looks like? Yeah. 
Um, so Light the Night, as Chris said, is just one of our um, of our um, fundraising campaigns. Um, and again, we are are these programs that we talked about, travel assistance, financial, you know, um, urgent need, different things like that, is funded by these campaigns. Mm -hmm. So Light the Night is um, is a really um, family focused and um, patient survivor focused um, type of event. So it's taking place um, Saturday, October twelfth mm -hmm. at Exploration Place. Um, registration opens at six. Um, and I think one of the most incredible, and Hannah touched on this a little bit too, I think one of the most iconic and incredible parts of it is our lanterns. So mm -hmm. it's an evening walk. Um, we have three different colored lancer lanterns that registered participants get. Um, white is for survivors. Red is if you're walking in support of a patient or research. And gold is if you're walking in memory of somebody you've mm -hmm. lost. Um, and so that night, again, is just, it is meant to be a, where we are literally lighting the night, bringing hope to the darkness of cancer. And that's our tagline and that's our hope. And that's yeah. really what we as at LLS strive to be for patients and for people who um, have been diagnosed with these illnesses. Um, and so um, it's a really fun night. It's, only, it's a short walk um, past the Keeper of the Plains, then mm -hmm. back to Exploration Place. Um, you know, we have a program where we, ha we have a mission speaker, um, and we have a moment of the night where all of our survivors, and we honor any cancer survivor, our research benefits a, a number of different illnesses mm -hmm. and cancers, um, where they come into, into the middle with their white lanterns, mm -hmm. and we have a beam of light that goes into the sky, um, and it's an incredible moment. To be a part of so um so yeah that's light the night um and it's actually the um the fastest growing charity walk in north america mm -hmm. which is pretty cool that so cool. over a million people across um, north america participate a year that's amazing so, yeah um so do you guys need help with that like if people wanted to volunteer how would they get a hold of you guys how could they get involved with that yes we would love people's help <laughs> <laughs> we would love um love that so um and i can provide my you know mm -hmm. my email and contact yeah. information um, but i would say you know we would we need help leading up to the walk um the night of um and we also would just love to see more people who are passionate about um finding cures yeah um, and passionate about making a difference for people like hannah um and and that would be register for the walk and raise money um, you know, a hundred dollars, just raising a hundred dollars or donating a hundred dollars will get you an event t-shirt and a mm -hmm. pass to our food tent, the champions for a cure tent. So, um, I would say that's a great place to start. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're biased in that we've seen the families and the faces that have actually right. been, have actually benefited from our research or our financial assistance. Um, but I will say it is great work and I would encourage people to come out and see what it's all about. Yeah. Um, and, and I would hope that they would see the magic of the night when they attend. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think most people unfortunately know somebody or have been affected by something like this, but mm -hmm. is this open to people that don't have that and maybe they just want to go, um, I don't know, just go support <laughs> other people? Yeah, I would say yes, it definitely is. Um, and it's just a, a great I think event to be a part of your community. Yeah. Um, and it's a beautiful, I mean, Scott talked about it, but I mean, being at exploration place right along the river, seeing the keeper of the plains at night with these lanterns, it is a beautiful event. So even if you're just looking to come out and, and see Wichita and downtown yeah. Wichita and its beauty, I think it's worth coming out for that too. Um, and also again, Hannah got to talk, you know, even for her seeing people who have also been impacted by this disease. Yeah. I think it's really startling to, to go there and see so many people and, even again, because ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, is um, is you know so prevalent among children. Seeing the number of children right. mm -hmm. with white lanterns, yeah. it's just really. I mean, it's brings it home. It's jaw it dropping. Home, yeah. So that's a big thing. Yeah, and it's also it's become a night for all cancer survivors, mm -hmm. whether right. you have a blood cancer or brain cancer or whatever. Yeah, um, it's a night of hope and inspiration. Um, so like Shelly mentioned before, all survivors, no matter what type of cancer you've had, get a white lantern. Um, and so you, you get to meet all types of, of people and that mm -hmm. becomes, you get connected to them and, um, it really, like I said, it becomes a, 
an inspirational. Yeah, moment. sounds yeah. very inspirational. And I will say too, I, I it's also a place to um, remember people you've lost, and um, and I hope that that is you know continues to be a space where people feel like they can come and remember their loved ones. Um, we do we have a remembrance pavilion um, that is a place where you can come and write a memory or share a memory. Um, but I think it's also one of those things just like for Hannah to see other white lanterns, to see other gold lanterns too. Yeah. It's also, I think, in a weird way comforting to know I'm not alone. Right. Um, and so many people have gone through this. And so I think that I, you know, and I've had the opportunity to be there in memory of someone too. And it does provide a, okay, I can keep going and keep doing this. Yeah. And and I think being there as someone who's lost someone, you see these other lanterns and you want to keep going to help those people. Mm -hmm. That's that's really cool. I hope a lot, a lot of people hear this and get get involved, maybe just mm -hmm. attend. It sounds like an amazing event. But yeah. um, I'll definitely link up all the everything about it, um, the website, your email, how people can get involved, everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but what was each of your inspiration for joining the society? Because you both work for mm -hmm. LLS, right? So what was your inspiration for wanting to join? Yeah, so um, what I do every day, I, I'm a mm -hmm. campaign manager for, campaign director for a different campaign, our Man and Woman of the Year campaign. But what I do every day is very passionate to me. My, my father is a two-time survivor of blood cancer, of a leukemia. And, um, I mean, if you talk to him today, he will tell you that he's alive because of the research that LS has funded advancements yeah. in treatments and therapies. Um, you know, he, he was diagnosed for the first time when I was in kindergarten and then again when I was in fifth grade. So oh, wow. I, I don't remember a whole lot cause I was so young. Um, but he'll, he, t like I said, he tells me now that, you know, when you relapse, you typically don't get the same treatment that you did right. the first time. So you have to go through a completely different, treatment type, whether that's, okay, uh, chemo and a bone marrow transplant put you in remission the first time. So if you relapse from that, the second time you have to get a stem cell transplant. And each time those advancements are in most cases done and founded by research that we do. So, yeah. um, it, 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 what I do is very important to me and, um, it's obviously helped my family a lot too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I got originally introduced to um, Light the Night when in 1999. Um, so my best friend growing up, her brother um, was diagnosed with T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So um, a more rare, complicated mm -hmm. version of um, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Um, and he was, he put his cancer into remission three times, but eventually passed away at the age of 13. Um, and he, they attended as a family, their first light the night walk, um, at, on his birthday while he was uh, alive and he got to experience that and them as a family mm -hmm. and then passed away just a couple months later. Wow. And I think watching my friend's family and, you know, all of us have gone through really hard things. And in some ways, if people just go hide under a rock the rest of your life, you totally don't blame them for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to see this family and I think I was eight, seven or eight at the time. Um, they totally just went into this, um, I mean, fierce mode of we don't want to see this happen again. And her older sister and, you know, with their parents, um, organized a light the night team wow. and, um, we were called the young hearts. So if you can imagine like seven, eight year olds and then high, a bunch of high schoolers <laughs> running around, <laughs> I mean, I remember having wagons of, do of like donuts and bagels yeah. that we would bring to houses and ask people for money as like an eight year old to raise money for LLS. That's pretty incredible though. Um, and it just, I mean, I think what was amazing was it was so, it was my first experience ever losing someone that I knew and that yeah. I cared about. Um, and then light the night just became part of my childhood. So we had things every year that we would do to raise money for LLS yeah. and we would go to the walk every year. And I think we had homecoming twice the same night in <laughs> high school and we still went wow. in our dresses yeah. and then went to homecoming afterwards. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but you know, so that was incredible. Um, 
and sadly we had other people in our community diagnosed with with blood cancer afterwards and mm-hmm. we lost one of our friends in high school our junior year of high school to leukemia yeah so um i think it just made i mean obviously it made life really hard um and made me really angry in some ways um but it also reminded me that man this work is still so important and to see those families continue to come to the walk or advocate for LS. I mean, my friend's family, this is their 20th year of going to the walk um, and raising money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So I think that in that way, I was so lucky to have people that inspired me to do that. And so it was very little of myself mm-hmm. and much more of them yeah. <laughs> that got me here. But um, but I think what's incredible is now in our work, we meet families here that are affected, you know, in Wichita that mm-hmm. are affected by this. And it just keeps you going still. Right. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's crazy. That's why it's so important to participate in events like Light the Night or any other fundraising campaign that we do. Because there are families that are going through this in Wichita. I mean, there are stories that people never find out about. You know, we've served a patient in their family who's daughter was diagnosed at birth with a blood cancer yeah um who a boy who was relapsed six seven times you know had to go through different clinical trials and eventually passed away so there are stories like that that are happening right here in this community that funds that are raised through events like this go and help those families yeah. and, or advance treatments so that families don't have to go through that anymore right. um, and if we continue to do that then obviously our end goal is to cure cancer and we think we can be close to that but Let's, let's get as close as we can. Sure. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people know those type of stories. Unless it was somebody in your close family or somebody you're at school with, you probably don't know about those. So right. I think it is important to get those stories out there. Um, with each of your personal experience, what was the hardest part? So, for example, I mean, you, you said you were pretty young, Chris, um, kindergarten or fifth grade. Was What was the hardest part about that? Or did you even really realize it until later on? Yeah, definitely things that I realized later on. I think in the moment, you never forget, like, I'll never forget my dad's hair falling out in clumps on his pillow in the hospital. Um, But I think I realized a lot of things afterwards, definitely Mm -hmm. with my mom. I'm the oldest of three boys. So obviously she was hauling three boys back and forth to the hospital to see their dad and having to take care of everything around the house while her husband was in the hospital. So you realize those things afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, it was a little different from my experience being seven or eight and or, you know, six to eight years old and then being in high school. But and it's it's funny to think of through the eyes of a child. You know, I thought it was so cool that my best friend got to sleep over during the school days, your school week, you know. Um, And so that was amazing to me that, you know, or it was for some weird, you know, weird reason. It was so fun for us to go to the hospital and to play on the playground there and to see her brother and. I don't remember being freaked out by him losing his hair or I I do remember, you know, seeing him, you know, in a state that I never had seen him in before. Um, And I thought it was weird that they have never had toilet paper in their house. And that's because their parents were busy, you know, taking him to and from appointments. And that's just, you know, and it's stuff that now I, I of course, understand in a Mm -hmm. totally different way. But as a child, it's just, you know, you cannot process it. Um, and then in high school, I think the hardest part was just trying to not be really angry. Um, I was not as, um, cool, calm and collected as Hannah. (laughs) Um, I mean, no, no way. Um, I was really, really angry. Um, and so it took some time for me to, to get over that, um, and to, and not even get over it, but to, to kind of let go of the anger and to accept and, um, And it's just weird being a high schooler and trying to do that Um, or going into college and being like, oh, you never had people, all these people die. I mean, why? That's totally normal. I don't know. So, um, yeah, it was just very strange. So gave me a weird perspective and um, and also helped gave me a really great perspective in some ways. But was that was my probably my biggest challenge. Yeah. Um, Do you guys have anything else? Um, just on your mind or stories or anything that pops up about the society or light the night? Well, I don't think so. Okay. That's no problem. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah. So, um, so we'll mix it up just a little bit. i um, just got a couple other questions I kind of ask everybody. So, um, is there anything that you guys often recommend to people, books, movies, podcasts, TV shows? 
Shell, I think Shell is going to answer these. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do any? I'll, I'll do the what to talk. Questions. Okay, you go to the what to talk. Okay. Perfect. Um, yes, I listen to a lot of podcasts these days because mm-hmm. I drive back and forth between our Kansas City and Wichita offices. Um, so I have really enjoyed Revisionist History yeah. um, by Malcolm Gladwell. Yep. Um, that has been awesome. And then I'm kind of a science nerd. So, um, or, you know, history nerd in some ways. Um, I love hidden brain. I don't know if mm-hmm. you ever heard of, that, heard of that, but I absolutely love that podcast too. Um, and then I had to stop listening to this because our, our entire, you know, day is filled with, you know, talking about oncology or cancer. Um, but the emperor of all maladies is a biography of cancer and it's a phenomenal book. Um, It is very dense, (laughs) but um, phenomenal book. And it really gives a perspective of just how cancer treatment in general has changed. Um, It gave me such appreciate an appreciation for working at LLS um, Mm -hmm. and just in learning about, about that. So um, yeah, so that was, that would, I would say two recommendations. Yeah, for sure. I'll have to link those up. Um, Do you have a favorite failure in any aspect of your life? I want to say this is my favorite failure. Um, <laughs> let's see. So in some ways, it's a failure because my body failed me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I played um, Division One field hockey. Okay. Um, and let's see. So my senior year, I tore my labrum in my shoulder. And um, I remember, so I tried to... You know, I got surgery right after right after our season and tried to get myself all together um, to go and try out for the national team. Mm-hmm. Um, my coach was wonderful and was, you know, really encouraging me to do that. Um, and I think it was a total epic failure because I literally gave myself probably four months to um, heal from a pretty major yeah. um, orthopedic surgery and then to go play um, really high level field hockey. Yeah. Um, so I obviously retore my labrum. <laughs> yeah, not good. No. And um, it was, you know, and I did, I did fine during our, you know, the scouting tournament, but I was obviously not at my best and retore my, my labrum. And so that was a total epic failure yeah. and pretty emblematic of me in general trying to do things my pace and not, um, you know, <laughs> not waiting and being. Yeah. Patient. Um, I think if my husband's listening, he'll say that I still do this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, so that's probably uh, my favorite failure in that it was so humbling to say, literally, my body is not doing this, and I that's kind of my fault. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, again, a, another place of having to accept and having to um, to move on and find new dreams. Sure. And you're probably not from Wichita or Kansas uh-huh. because I don't think anyone plays field hockey no, around here. Nobody, no. uh-uh. I know East. I know East Coast. It was yeah. Um, what is your definition of success? Um, I think that I would say my definition of success is doing things with integrity. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that I try to tell myself that obviously we have goals and, you know, in our work or we have goals in our life. But um, I would say if I'm doing everything that I do with integrity and to the best of my ability, then that's successful. Even if I hadn't, yeah. if even if I don't hit a benchmark that is placed for me. For sure. Um, do you have a motto, life motto you live by or what's some of the best advice that you've ever received? Um, yeah. So the honestly the another field hockey reference Mm -hmm. (laughs) um i would say one of the best i I mean most incredible informative advice was um, my coach who gave us a list of standards for our team that i still use to this day and one of those that came to mind was um uncomfortable comfortable being uncomfortable so trying to you know again put yourself in situations where it's probably uncomfortable Mm -hmm. but the more you do that the more comfortable you'll get in those and so I think that's to me a just a reminder to challenge myself um and to not live in a comfort zone um and you know not to put myself in harm's way by any means but to push myself and so that's one thing that um one of my life mottos I guess Mm -hmm. what is a habit that you've developed over the past few years that's most improved your life Okay, I'm working on developing this, so it's not, <laughs> I have not mastered Progress it. Progress is good. Um, but I would say putting my devices to bed before I go to bed. Sure. That is something I keep telling it's myself. Difficult. 
it is so difficult but I keep I keep telling myself that put your devices to bed before you go to bed and it's just good sleep hygiene it's super healthy for you know a marriage or a family whatever it may be Mm -hmm. um even if you're single it's the healthier healthier choice um so yeah that's what I'm working on developing what practical tips do you have for that (laughs) put the phone in the other room what does that look like (laughs) I it and it really depends I guess on on a person's willpower I guess or just you know every individual person I'm pretty good as long as if I as long as I set my um, alarm I can turn my phone over and I'm pretty good about not touching it again Mm -hmm. Um, so I can leave it in my in my room. I I would say I need to find a lockbox to put my husband's phone away in because <laughs> both of us are trying to do this. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's it so really depends on your you know yourself and try different things. Um, but that really works for me. Is yeah. once I've set my alarm, I put it down and I don't look at it again. I think that's a lot more self control than most people have. I, so I, I, me well, included. <laughs> it is. It is what, the first thing you do when you wake up. You, exactly. You exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I even think about it, I'm like, oh, I don't need to check this. Check it anyways. Yeah, and, so. right. It's hard, but, you know, baby steps. I'm, I'm still working on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, heck, one of the things that I've done is, you know, I almost live by my calendar and my phone. Yeah. We don't have a paper calendar anymore, but if I didn't have a calendar in my phone, what would I do? Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, so for both of you guys, uh, Wichita resident and a newly Wichita visiting resident, <laughs> um, what is your favorite part of Wichita or a hidden gem in Wichita? So I don't know if this is technically a hidden gem, but I love the restaurant, the public of the Brickyard. Yeah. Love it. And maybe Delicious. I think it's hidden because you have to walk down the brick stairs <laughs> and it's kind of like in a dark area but i love that restaurant a friend um it's very good let me know i didn't even know it was there yeah. let me know it was there what a couple of years ago and i go there very pretty often now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. actually i do ha- i'll say one um leslie's coffee co is that yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, i've yeah. been there a couple of times and love that place yeah we've just been once but it's awesome yeah it's so cool and i'm a big coffee person and so that's been awesome pimento cheese toast Um, is there anything you wish Wichita had that it doesn't or what would you improve about Wichita no obviously I feel like Wichita is growing now Um, we're about to get a Dave and Buster's yeah um everyone wants a cheesecake factory um everybody wants one yeah everyone wants a cheesecake factory. we have Wichita cheesecake now which I haven't had yet but I haven't tried that um but no not not particular but I'm excited about the new baseball stadium yes that'll be awesome very excited Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess for each of you, um, even Shelly, mm-hmm. um, what does Wichita mean to you guys? Um, when, when, when people say Wichita, I think of a caring community, especially working in the nonprofit realm. Obviously, I work for LLS, and every, the things that we do are awesome. Um, but there are so many other nonprofits that support families and other initiatives that are great, too. And I think that's a great aspect of Wichita that – if someone needs support, a family needs support, your kid's been diagnosed with cancer, whatever it is, there's places you can go and people you can talk to that are there to help you. And I think that's an awesome part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I would say probably pretty similar. I think I've been, um, I never imagined in my wildest dreams ever living in the Midwest mm-hmm. and really did not know Wichita existed until a year ago. And I'm so grateful that I'm here and that I have the opportunity to come down so frequently. Um, and so I think that that's the biggest reason is meeting different, you know, whether it's families we work with, um, you know, meeting actual caregivers or doctors and nurses. Um, so that's really my oh, my sliver of a lot of who I spend time mm-hmm. with. But um, but I have been just so blown away by people's heart and, um, and yeah, willingness to give a helping hand and... Um, yeah, how kind people are. I was, I joked before mm-hmm. we started this and said I was so weirded out when someone asked me how I was doing in line at Tanya's Soup Kitchen because I was like, what is, what do they want from me? Mm-hmm. But that's so great. It's like friendly, I need yeah. to soften my heart and realize mm-hmm. that, oh, it's okay for people to ask me how I'm doing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's really what I would say similarly. Yeah. Caring community, um, been, a, been an incredible experience and feel f- so fortunate to have um, met so many people down here. For sure. Um, well, I really appreciate you guys both coming on, Chris and Shelley, just talk about um, the society, what you guys do, the research, um, and light the night. And mm-hmm. hopefully it's going to be a great event again and just keep building every year. So yeah. I appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Wichita Podcast. 
If you enjoyed, please share it with a friend and leave a review on whatever podcast platform you use. I'm putting all of the podcasts on YouTube now as well, and we'll start doing video podcasts for some episodes in the future. So go to Wichita Life Podcast on YouTube and subscribe today. If you want to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page. Thanks for the listening.